Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So I am so excited to jump in today's video because I'm finally gonna be diving into something that has been highly requested. So today I'm gonna be talking about craft fairs or craft shows, art shows, markets, whatever you wanna call them, that's what we're gonna be discussing today. So whether you haven't done a craft fair and you're interested in getting into them, maybe you have your first one that's coming up, or maybe you've done some, but you just want some more tips and advice on the subject. In any case, this is the video for you, so keep watching. So obviously I'm going to give you guys all the tips and advice that I have because I've done a lot of craft fairs, but I also want to talk about the things that I think you have to have if you do craft fairs, things that you don't necessarily have to have, but I recommend having because they made my life easier. Some of the things that you can do to prep and get ready for an upcoming craft fair. And not only are we going to be talking about displays, but we're also going to be talking about how to actually get customers to come into your booth and get those sales. All right, guys. So without any further ado, let's jump into it. So I want to start by saying I've done several craft fairs, but I also feel like I had a lot of knowledge prior to even getting into them because I have a lot of friends and family members that also do them, including my parents who have done them for years. And then when I started my small business making my own products, I decided to dabble in the craft fair world myself and become a vendor. So when I first started my business, I was only making custom tumblers and I started selling them on Facebook marketplace and then within a few months of getting several orders I decided why not try to do a craft fair at the time my parents were already doing a lot of craft fairs they build and repurpose a lot of furniture and then resell that so for my very first craft fair my parents had rented two spaces at this craft fair so wherever they set up their furniture I kind of went around and just kind of placed some tumblers on top of furniture they didn't only sell furniture my mom is a big like antique collector and she resells stuff. She does like a lot of like home decor stuff. So basically wherever her stuff was kind of setting on top of all the furniture that they had built, I kind of set my tumblers up with that. And while I was really unsure how they were going to do in this specific craft fair, because it was more of like, you know, farmhouse style stuff. And there was a lot of like vendors selling furniture and like home decor and stuff like that. I wasn't really sure how my cups were gonna sell and fit in there, but they did so well that I just kept doing craft fairs after that. So after that first one, just selling stuff out of my parents' booth, while that was awesome because I didn't have to pay for a booth fee and do all the paperwork and all the stuff that goes along with that, I knew I definitely wanted to have my own booth and maybe try making some other products that kind of go hand in hand with that and sell those at craft fairs with my tumblers as well. So the first thing I did was go on Facebook and you know how there's like a ton of different Facebook groups. I always started by looking up the town that I was in and then I would type in craft fairs, craft shows, art shows, marketplaces, whatever. And then I would kind of expand the search from there and just kind of search the surrounding areas because at the time I kind of lived in a small town so there wasn't really a ton of craft fairs in that town. I had to kind of drive like 30, 45 minutes to an hour away from my house to get to the good craft fairs. But typically there was always a site or something that would have like a list of all the events in that city town and it would tell you where it's gonna be located, when it's going to be, if you wanna become a vendor, click here or here's the number you need to call or email you need to reach out to or whatever nine times out of ten there was always like an email address that I had to email and typically it was like the event coordinator or the person that owned that land that that craft fair was going to be on and then they would email me back a vendor application form that I then had to fill out and wait for my approval to know if I got accepted into that craft fair or not. Now, typically on these forms, obviously they're gonna have you put your personal information in, you know, your address, your phone number, how to contact you, your email address. But there are also some that require that you have a tax ID number to participate. There's also some that will make you like list all of your social media handles so that they can tag you whenever they are doing their marketing to try to get people to come to their event. And on these forms, I had to write down all the different types of products that I was selling and some of them required that I send them pictures of the products that I'm selling while others just wanted to know that I was experienced in craft fairs and they just wanted pictures of my previous setups. Now, like I said, because I had friends and family that were already doing craft fairs, I already knew what I was getting into and was already prepared for all of that. Okay, so now that I've told you my whole backstory on how I got started with craft fairs and then how I would go about finding future ones, now I wanna jump into all of the things that I think you must have in order to do craft fairs. Every single craft fair that 
I participated in. I was outside. So obviously I'm going to recommend a tent. However, if you are selling a product that you know you have to sell inside and you know you're not going to be signing up for any craft fairs that are outside because you're only going to be doing ones that are at like expo centers, convention centers, whatever, then obviously you're not going to need a tent. But on the likely chance that you're going to be doing a lot of art shows or craft fairs outside like I did, I definitely recommend not cheaping out on your tent. Do not get the cheapest tent that you can find. At least get the mid-grade one. But I definitely recommend doing your research and reading your reviews. Now, I personally bought the same one that my parents had because I knew it was a good one. So I just went with that, which I will link that down below in my video description for you guys. But I do want to quickly tell you guys a story. At one of the very first craft fairs that I had signed up for, there was a small percent chance that it was going to rain that day. But no one thought anything of it because it'll rain while there's sunshine out. And half the time when it starts raining it's over within 20 or 30 minutes unless it's hurricane season <laughs> so with it only being like a 15 or 20 percent chance or whatever number it was we didn't think anything of it but luckily we had gotten that tent and that tent came with like these sides that you can unzip and take down so you can have just like the canopy part of your tent or we could zip up these walls so that there was only one way in and out of our booth on one of the walls. And then we had the entire rest of the booth closed in. And it has these like little flaps that you can unzip for windows if you would like. So when it started pouring down rain for the entire craft fair, we whipped out the walls to the booth real quick, zipped them up, closed the windows, and we were perfectly dry the entire time other than when the craft fair was over and we had to load up our car with all of our products. But unfortunately, the person next to me bought like one of those cheapo depot tents from Walmart that just like barely fold out. Typically like people have them like when they go to the beach or something. Anyway, when it started raining within like 20 or 30 minutes, that water had pulled on top of her canopy on her tent, busted a hole through the entire canopy. Everything in her booth was wet. The customers that were under her tent were wet. She was all wet. And then she had to pack up all of her product and leave and couldn't stay and keep selling. So she was out money because she paid for that booth space and then didn't even get to make any sales. So I tell that story in hopes that I can save you from that happening. So definitely buy a tent that has good reviews. Now the next thing I'm obviously going to recommend is tables and some type of cover or something to go over the table because clearly you don't want to just throw your stuff on the ground and just have piles of junk everywhere. It's not a yard sale or flea market. You want your stuff to be displayed nicely so make sure you have tables. I always just bought the folding tables that you can get at Walmart and then instead of buying the cheap plastic table covers to go over those tables. I've used fabric tablecloths before. I've even used curtains before. But then I discovered the vinyl backdrops that you can get on Amazon that people typically do like photography portraits or product photos with and it's just like a backdrop behind you. I got one that looked like vintage shiplap or barnwood and then I would just drape that over my tables and then tape it in such a way that it just looks like a solid piece of wood that's just like built out of old barnwood or something. But I just loved those vinyl tablecloths because if something spilt on it or if it rained, it's vinyl, it's waterproof. But the vinyl backdrops are definitely like thicker and more durable than like the really thin plastic tablecloths that you can typically get at the store. So here is the vinyl backdrop that I was just talking about. So this is one that I have on this table. So this is just your basic like six foot folding table that I got at Walmart. And then I just put this vinyl backdrop that I got off of Amazon on top of it. And then I just taped it on the side so that it just kind of curves around it. And it just looks like a solid piece of wood. But as you can see, it just looks so much better than a folding table. So while we're talking about how things look, I also recommend that you should have some type of display for your product. For example, for my tumblers, it worked really well to have shelves. So my dad built me three wooden ladders and I would basically stand two ladders up and then I would put one ladder on top and then I would put shelves in between all of the ladder slats. So then I would just have a really cool looking shelf and I could put so many tumblers on it. And I could also hang products down from the top of it and on the sides of it. So that worked really well for me. It was very low cost because we just used scrap wood that we already had laying around. But maybe you make your own t-shirts, maybe you're a boutique owner and you're selling clothes. Obviously you would want like racks for those things. Or when I sold t-shirts, I would have them folded up and stacked up according to size. 
but I would have them like inside wooden crates so that they were like organized and they looked nice and presentable. So I definitely recommend investing in some displays or making your own because it does make a world of a difference when it comes to getting those sales later. Now the next thing that I think you have to have if you do craft fairs and I don't care what you sell is bags. Unless you're selling furniture or something that literally cannot go into a bag, then you need to have bags. And I say that because one of the very first craft fairs I did, I didn't realize how busy it was going to be. And I ran out of bags like halfway through the craft fair. And it was so awkward for people to hand me stuff that they wanted to buy. I would set it down, get their payment and everything, and then I would have to pick their stuff back up hand it back to them and apologize for not having any bags. Now luckily everyone was super nice because almost everyone already had a bag or it was a woman that had a purse and she could just throw whatever she bought in there. But it was so painfully awkward for me. Save yourself and make sure you buy enough bags. The next thing I think you have to have if you do a craft fair is some type of cash bag or a cash box. You obviously don't need like a full on register or anything, but I definitely think that you should have some kind of bag or box to keep all your money in because like I said, it's not a yard sale. You do not want to be standing there when someone's trying to purchase something from you, pulling out wadded cash from your pockets and handing it to them. That's awkward. That's unprofessional. Don't do that. Have all of your money in a cash bag or a cash box. Luckily, my husband was always there to help me with my craft fairs because I had so much product that he would have to help me set up my craft fairs. And typically my booth was always so busy that I was always talking to customers. So I always had him in the corner, taking the money, putting stuff in bags and giving people their stuff. So we always had a cash bag or a cash box like at our little checkout station that we had in the back corner of the booth. But if you're gonna be by yourself, then maybe even just get like a fanny pack or something something that you can have on you just so that your money is not wadded up in your pockets and you're trying to juggle everyone's change. The next thing that I recommend having is some kind of box or bag or something that has everything that you could possibly need, extras of every little thing. And what I mean by that is, so I bought myself this tackle box. I think I got this from Walmart or something. And typically I would keep like extra pens, Sharpies and stuff up here. But then in the actual box, I would have like any little tools or anything that I needed, extra tags, business cards when people asked for them. I had sanitizer, tape if I needed it. There's a small extension cord in here. Scissors, whatever you could think of that I might need, I brought it. And I cannot tell you how many times that saved me. Okay, now I wanna quickly go through the things that you don't necessarily have to have, but I would recommend just from my experience. I definitely recommend getting yourself like a little card reader that you can plug into your tablet, laptop, phone, whatever, so that you can accept debit and credit card payments. It just makes it so much easier because not everyone will bring cash or they're limited on the amount of cash that they have. I've had so many purchases through my debit and credit card reader that I think I wouldn't have had had I not had that with me. And if you're going to have one of those credit card readers, I definitely recommend getting yourself a hotspot or pay for your service to add a hotspot to your line or whatever. Now I know a lot of people can just pull a hotspot up on their phone. Some phone plans like include it in their plans. I had a little portable one that I would bring with me and I always set it up while we were setting up the booth so that I could have Wi-Fi inside my booth because a lot of the craft fairs and craft shows that I've done, they were in like remote locations or they were out in the middle of nowhere where there like was terrible service. Because in order for your phone or tablet or computer to process the actual transaction, you do need internet. While you can process payments without actual internet and it'll just be pending until you have internet. I never wanted to risk that because I was like worried that a payment like wouldn't go through and then someone would obviously walk away with a product thinking that it was paid for and then their payment didn't actually process. So I had a hotspot solely for the purpose of being able to have Wi-Fi and being able to process those payments immediately. I definitely recommend bringing a chair. While there were some craft fairs where I was basically on my feet like the entire time and didn't sit down for two seconds, there were some craft fairs that weren't as busy as I thought they were going to be and I wish I had a chair because I was just standing around. I also recommend bringing snacks and drinks. You may not even get a chance to eat but there may be five minutes of silence or where people are just walking by and not coming into your booth where you have five seconds to cram something in but definitely bring your own drinks. We would always bring like a super small like compact cooler that we would just keep underneath the table back where we were sitting. I think it goes without saying I definitely recommend wearing comfy 
these shoes. The first couple craft fairs I did, I was more worried about like looking cute for my small business. It's everyone's first impression of me. I'm representing my small business and the products that I made. So I wanted to look cute, not comfortable. And my feet hated me for it by the end of the day. So do yourself a favor and wear comfy shoes or at least bring comfy shoes so that when you're ready to change out of them, you can. I also think it goes without saying if it's warm or hot out and there's like sunshine. I don't even care if you're under a tent the whole time. I definitely recommend bringing sunglasses or a hat and definitely sunscreen. Like I said, my husband was always in the back of the booth accepting all the payments. So he was underneath like the shade under the canopy inside the tent. But with the way the sun was shining, he would always come home so sunburned by the end of the day even though he was under the tent the entire time. I obviously recommend bringing sanitizer. Even before COVID, I was bringing sanitizer to all of my events and I would just have them like setting up my little checkout station for my husband to use like when he was taking cash or if I was sitting back there doing it, we have sanitizer. But I also made it a point to set it on the cash out stand because when people would walk up with their products, they could set their stuff down and then they could use it if they wanted to as well. I would also bring a thing of Clorox wipes just to wipe down my tables. And if I needed to wipe down a product or something, then I would have them there. Next thing that I wanna recommend that you don't necessarily have to have, but I just think it's a good idea to have, especially if you're like a boutique owner or a small business owner. And that is some type of sign or banner. Now, if you guys can't tell, this is my old logo that I had. But I got these made from a local shop when I started doing craft fairs. So this was my first logo. Um, and then at the bottom, I have my website, my Facebook, and my Instagram on there. And I would always have this like hanging in the back of my booth so that it was kind of like our backdrop. And even if you were standing 30 feet away from my booth, you could see who I was. Now, obviously you could get really creative and make or paint your own. You could even buy like a sheet of acrylic and paint your sign or logo on that. Or you could just look around locally for a local sign shop, which is what I did. And I actually waited for this shop to have a sale on their band. Banners. I got mine when they were doing a buy one get one free sale so I got two banners but either way if you're a boutique owner small business owner whatever craft fairs are a great way to get your name out there and get exposure so I definitely recommend having your business name and logo somewhere really big in your booth where people are going to see it now the last thing that I want to recommend that you don't necessarily have to have but I think you should have is business cards now there's a huge debate on business cards now when I first started doing craft fairs I was handing out business cards. On one side, it had my logo and business name. And then on the other side, it had all of my social media and where they could find my business. But I quickly realized that business cards were kind of a waste of money. So then I upgraded to Popple, which is basically like an electronic business card. And no, unfortunately, this is not an ad. I just wanted to share this with you guys because while a lot of people asked for my business cards, I couldn't tell you how many times after the craft fairs were over, just walking my products back to my car, how many business cards I would see on the ground and not just mine, but all the other vendors that were there that handed out business cards as well. There would always be so many business cards on the ground, around the trash cans, because typically 50% of the people that ask for a business card are just asking to be polite. They have no intention of actually using it later. And then the other half are genuinely interested, but then half of those people are probably probably going to lose their business card before they actually make a purchase from you. So now I just recommend getting one of these and they have a ton of different brands. You don't necessarily have to get the Popple brand. So the Popple is this little circle thing that's on the back of my phone and it just sticks to the back of my phone. And once it's on, it's really hard to peel off. Like I've had this on my phone for a long time and it hasn't even come close to peeling off. But basically if someone asks for your business card, you just say, oh yeah, right here. And all they have to do is hold their phone up to this and then all all of your information is going to pop up on their screen. So then if they wanted to follow me on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, Pinterest, whatever, then they could do that right then and there. And I didn't waste any money on a business card that's going to end up getting thrown away anyway. Like I said, I think that one was only like $20. They have some that are even cheaper than that. And it's completely free unless you upgrade to the pro, which gives you like more features and benefits. Obviously, I just have like the personal basic plan, which is free. So I just had to pay for the popple one time and obviously it has paid for itself. Okay, so now I wanna talk about all the things
things that you can do to prepare and get ready for your upcoming craft fair. So obviously the first thing that you're going to want to do is complete your form, make sure all of your paperwork is turned in on time, and you've sent any documents or pictures that you needed to send. Once you get approved for that craft fair, or maybe you know ahead of time that you're going to be approved, it's just a formality, go ahead and get started on making your products if you hand make your products. The sooner the better because the sooner you start making, the more that you can make and prepare for your craft fair. Now, when I was really deep into like craft fair season and I would have them like weekend after weekend, I would set a set amount of like custom orders that I would take during my craft fair season because it became really difficult to process and make custom orders while I was trying to prepare for an upcoming craft fair. So then I had to set a limit on how many custom orders I was going to take and I would know, okay, I can't make more than this before this craft fair because I need to focus on the product that's going to be there. If you're a boutique owner and you're just like buying and reselling things, then obviously you're gonna want to order your product as far in advance as you can, just in case there's any delays on getting it. Another thing that you can kind of do along the same lines as that is plan your products according to the season of that time. For example, if I was doing a craft fair August through October, I would have a lot of fall products. But when I would do craft fairs in November, December, I had exclusive Christmas products. So you obviously want to kind of go along with your season and what's going on, what's trending and popular at that time. Whether you are reselling products that are already made and ready to go to sell, or you're making your own handmade products, either way, I recommend filming as much as you can, especially if you are hand making your own products, because this is valuable content that you can use to market your business later. For example, while I was making all those Fortnite tumblers, I was recording myself making all those Fortnite tumblers. And then I would turn around and post those videos on my Instagram or my story or my Facebook or whatever. But I would caption it, be ready for these at my next upcoming craft fair. And then I would link all the information to that craft fair. And then if people swiped up on my story or messaged me or whatever after they saw that because they really wanted it, I would engage with them and try to convince them to come to the craft fair to come and get it or they can place an order after the craft fair is done because I obviously wasn't accepting custom orders at that time and I was trying to drive sales to my craft fair to get people to come and actually see me and buy my products but we'll get more into that later so like I was saying just try to video as much as you can and then turn around and use that as content to market the products that you're about to be selling at your craft fairs give your customers and viewers sneak peeks let them see what you're going to be having maybe not show everything but just give a little behind the scenes or something not only is it a great way to get people to actually come and see you at your craft fair but it's also a great way to get engagement on all of your social media platforms and people want to see what you're making and what you're doing now i don't care what you sell i think it is imperative that you do inventory on all of your products prior to the craft fair and i say that because you want to know before you're there exactly what you have typically i would always make like a google spreadsheet i would have the item description and how much i was charging for it how many quantities i had if it was something that i had duplicates of but in the column where I would put the price next to that I would put the cost of that product that it took to make so that that next column I could have the profit of each item and I knew exactly when I walked away from a craft fair how much I made to the penny so not only is doing your inventory beforehand good for your bookkeeping purposes but it's also really good because I was able to pinpoint what items were stolen and I was able to see after a craft fair like oh I had five of those and four out of the five sold that's a really popular item I'm definitely going to make that for my next upcoming craft fair but as you can see I think it's really important to do inventory now while I was doing inventory at the same time I was doing inventory I was also making tags to tag all of my products so I would type the price on the computer on my google spreadsheet and then I would write it on a tag and then attach it because like I said it's not a yard sale it's not a flea market you do not want your customers to have to yell at you across the booth to ask you how much something is because you didn't put a tag on it. Personally, I'm a very awkward person out in public, so I will not ask someone how much something is. If it doesn't have a price on it, 
I set it back down and I walk away. So I know that there are plenty of people out there that are like me and they will literally walk away and not ask how much something is. Don't make your customers ask, tag everything. The only reason you shouldn't have your stuff tagged is if you have like a clear like menu or sign, banner, something where you have like set prices. For example, I have a friend who does craft fairs and all she sells is clothing. So she has a really big sign right in the middle of her booth and it says, t-shirts $25, long sleeve shirts $35, sweatshirts $40, but she has clear signage of how much her products are that people can't question. Another thing that I think that you should do well before your craft fair is actually plan out your booth or the space that you're going to be in. My booth setup changed all the time, but it kind of had the same flow everywhere I went. I always had my really tall ladder shelf on one of the sides. I would have one or two tables in my booth. I may have a third table in there or some kind of hanging rack or something. But I always knew that I was working in a 10 by 10 space. So the first few times I wanted to just practice opening and closing, setting up my tent. So I would literally take my entire tent, my entire setup, tables and all, would take them to my backyard, set the whole thing up and figure out exactly how I wanted it laid out. So after my first few craft fairs, I obviously didn't want to keep getting out the booth every time to figure out how I was going to set up. So then I would just get some painter's tape and then tape off a square inside my house and then just kind of figure out where I'm gonna be putting all of my tables and displays and everything. Now, on the note of displays, I definitely recommend making all of your displays well in advance so that if you need to make any adjustments or tweaks or whatever, you have time to do that. Like I said, I DIY'd a lot of my own displays because displays can get really costly and sometimes they don't fit your product or what you need exactly how you need it to. So I personally just found that DIYing my own displays just always works out better because I save my own money, they always end up looking great and they fit my needs perfectly. But I will say if you are ordering any displays, so one time I ordered this like tiered little tray that I think I ordered off of like AliExpress or something and it was just like this plastic little tray and I was just planning on putting like really small things in there. But when I got it in the mail like two months later, the whole thing was broken inside the box. So luckily I had ordered that so far in advance that it didn't even matter that it was broken. I ended up just making my own anyway, but I found that super cheap on AliExpress. Obviously it didn't do me any good because it came broken, but it didn't matter because I got my money back and I ended up having a really great display in the end because I ended up making my own. Now the three things that I think you should do the night before your craft fair, the night before your craft fair, you should make sure that you have enough cash and change for the craft fair. We would always load up our vehicles the night before so that the next morning we could just get up, make our coffee and go set up our booth and we wouldn't have to load the car or do any of that. While we were loading the car, the third thing that I was doing was double checking my entire list, making sure that I was packing everything. And I'm not even talking about the products because typically I would already have the products done, boxed up, ready to go, setting in my garage, ready to go into my vehicle. I'm talking about tent, tent cover, table, table covers, the ladder and shelf display, the chairs, the toolbox, anything that I was bringing, I would load it into the car. The only thing that wasn't in the car the night before was my cash box that I would obviously grab and bring with me the morning of to the craft fair. So I definitely recommend trying to get that done because you are gonna be so scatterbrained just trying to set up for this craft fair. Typically, you never have enough time to run home and you definitely don't get to leave during your craft fair if you've forgotten something. So if you just plan ahead of time, pack ahead of time, and then double check that you have everything, you're good to go. Okay, so the next thing that I wanna talk about is actually getting people to come into your booth and getting those sales. Well, obviously, the first thing that I'm gonna say is your displays matter. The appearance of your entire booth matters. If you have a poorly set up booth, no one is going to walk in to even bother looking at your stuff because you don't look professional or presentable at all. It is imperative that you have eye catching displays that are like aesthetically pleasing to the eye. What I mean by that is you don't wanna just walk into a booth that just has tables all the way around and you just have some stuff setting all over tables. If that was the case, it would just look like you're 
basic flea market. So instead of just having tables with all of my stuff piled on it, I would set up my tables, but I might have some like crates on the ground that have some stuff setting on top of it. I would have containers or boxes or crates or something all over the table to just create different levels. You want something that's going to catch someone's eye walking by. So if you have something that's like different levels, they are going to scan your entire booth with their eyes while they're walking by or walking into your booth. I also think a really important part of getting sales is you want it to be easy and convenient for your customer. You don't want them to have to question anything or second guess anything. And you want your booth to be as welcoming as possible. One thing that I did is I bought these little chocolate board easels. I think I got them at Michael's. I can't remember if I got them on clearance or on sale or something. But then I just took some vinyl that I cut out on my Cricut and then I made my own signs and then displayed them throughout my booth. So I always had this one at like my little checkout station. Another one that I had was this one that I had on random tables and it just says let's be friends, follow me. But I would just have like cute little signs like that that are not only welcoming and inviting but also answer questions that they could have that they may be too afraid to ask. Not only only that I just think it makes you look extra professional which is always great when you're running a small business and you're trying to make a good impression at a craft fair another thing that I think is really imperative while we're talking about displays is have your products nicely placed and organized you don't want to just walk into a booth that's selling clothing that just has their clothes piled on the table and I'm not talking like mounds of clothes I'm talking like they laid the shirts out flat but like laid them on the table but then just stack them all and then you just have these mountains of shirts or whatever all over these tables. I personally wouldn't want to walk into a booth like that because I think it'd be super awkward to like try to dig through the sizes and the different designs while the person that is running the booth is watching me. So obviously if I was selling clothes I would have them like folded nicely, organized by size or put them in a crate in nice neat organized stacks or have them hanging on nice racks presented nicely or maybe you're selling artwork or something and you have like a pegboard that you can hang your artwork onto instead of just having it laid out flat on a table where no one can really see it walking by your booth. You know what I mean? The nicer you have your things presented, the better the chance of actually getting that sale. Because while yes, your product might speak for yourself and it might be amazing work and you may be an amazing artist or whatever, if your stuff is not displayed nicely, it's not going to do your products any good because no one is even going to come in to look at them. Another tactic that I would use is I would have exclusive products or sales. For example, like earlier I talked about how I knew Fortnite was trending at that time. So I made a lot of Fortnite tumblers knowing that people were gonna be buying those. I also made a couple of Fortnite tumblers that I only made one or two of and I let people know this is only going to be at this craft fair. You cannot get this any other time to get people to come and see me. I would also advertise that I would have an exclusive freshie sale for that craft fair where I would give a certain percentage off of freshies or the more you buy, the more I would give off. Or if you bought two freshies, you get a third one free or whatever sale I was doing at that time. I would let everyone know on my social media ahead of time that I was going to be doing that so that they would come and see me. But I also did that for the people walking by. They see sale, they see sale, see discounts, whatever. They are drawn to come in because they know they're going to save money from the get-go. And while we're talking about having exclusive craft fair products or sales, this also kind of goes hand in hand with impulse buying. But like I said, I would make one or two of an exclusive item that I would say is at that craft fair and I would let everyone know that so that someone would have the impulse to buy it right then because they knew I wasn't making that product again. They knew they couldn't get that anywhere else or they knew that they wouldn't get it for a better deal if I was having a sale or something. Another way that you could achieve that is let's say that you make t-shirts for your craft fairs. You might make 20 shirts of one design. And for this example, let's say you have five smalls. If it were me, I would only put out two and then I would have the other three under the table ready to put out when someone buys those but I never put out my full inventory if I have duplicates of something because you want that impulse purchase you want your customer to feel like oh my gosh I have to get this I have to get it now I can't wait on it you don't want them to give themselves a second to second guess their decision in buying your product so I always recommend that because that always worked for me and then obviously I think it goes without saying that it's really important that you be super friendly be welcoming be smiling 
smiling. Don't be in the corner of your booth frowning with your arms crossed because then no one's gonna wanna come in your booth because you look grumpy. But you also don't wanna be super pushy. You don't wanna pressure the customers, be overbearing, talking to them the entire time. And you definitely don't want to hover or make them feel uncomfortable. You want to give them an opportunity to shop by themselves, be in their own thoughts. You don't want to be the car salesman of the craft fair, if you know what I mean. And finally, I'm gonna give you guys some more tips and advice that helped me out. So one of the number one things that I recommend people do is just listen. Whether you're by yourself or you have someone sitting in your booth helping you out, listen to your customers when you can. And I'm not talking about when they're having a conversation with you. I'm talking about listen to the customers that walked into your booth with their friend or family member or maybe they're on the phone with someone. Because it never failed, I always got so much feedback from my customers before they even purchased from me. And I've had plenty of people come in and they'll pick up something and they're like, oh, I wish this was in this color or I wish there was more options of this and sometimes I would even get ideas on products that I should bring to my next one because of conversations that my customers were having. So I definitely recommend listening and observing as much as you can. Now on that note obviously just know that you can't please everyone Sometimes you're gonna hear people say mean things or say things as they're walking out of your booth or whatever. Either way, don't take anything personally. You cannot please everyone. I've never had someone complain or say something so rude to me to my face. I've heard people say some rude things like as they were walking out, but they weren't buying anything anyways. So I really could care less about their opinion because they weren't gonna support me no matter what. So you just can't listen to the negativity if you do get any. But if it's just constructive criticism, obviously don't take that personally and just try to improve for next time. Another thing that I recommend that I think it should go without saying, but I'm going to say it because I've experienced this is do not haggle with anyone, set firm prices and stick with it. There were several different times where I had some people come into my booth and they would ask me if I would take this amount for this product or this amount for that product. And I would just professionally and politely say no, that the price is listed on that product and just leave it at that. Do not sell yourself short and do not allow someone to take advantage of you. Another piece of advice that I have for you is try your best not to compare yourself to other vendors. I remember my first few craft fairs, I just felt so out of place because no one was selling the products that I was selling and all of my vendor neighbors were in the same niche and I just felt so excluded. I was comparing my displays to their displays. They were obviously more experienced than I was and it really just threw off my vibe for the whole day because I was constantly comparing my small business and my booth to theirs and you just can't do that. By the end of that craft fair, my booth ended up having more foot traffic than my neighbors because I was the only one at that craft fair selling the types of products that I was selling. So just know that. And the last piece of advice and probably the most important piece of advice that I have to give you is if your craft fair doesn't go as planned, it's okay. Maybe you didn't make as much as you thought you were going to. Maybe certain products that you thought were going to do really well didn't do well at all. I have walked away from plenty of craft fairs where I didn't make as much as I thought it was going to, but I always told myself that it was worth it. As long as I made the money back that I spent on the booth rent, which was always less than $100, so that was never a problem, then it would be okay. And in any case, no matter how much money I made, I've always gotten to meet so many interesting people at craft fairs, not just customers, which I love bonding with and I love being able to see the customer's reactions. When they see my product, they get excited enough that they fall in love with it and wanna buy it. I've also become friends with a lot of people that I've met at craft fairs that were also vendors at those craft fairs. And not only that, I've always gained followers on social media and at the very least it was a learning opportunity and I gained a lot of knowledge from doing craft fairs. So as always guys if you have any questions or comments feel free to drop your comment down below. If you like this video please let me know that you liked it by giving me a big thumbs up and if you're not already subscribed to my channel make sure to click that subscribe button down below so you don't miss out on any other small business related content. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Let's try this again. Try to get your words out this time. Ma. I think it's so funny how like everything in my house, like it's nowhere near glitter. There's no glitter over here, but everything gets covered in glitter. Everything. Where was I going with that? Round of applause. Round of applause.